Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, all you minders out there. Hope everybody is getting a great start to 2021. We're ready to be off and running. I know I've done a couple of episodes already, but I'm anxious to get into some meat here, some actual painting. And I got a juicy one for you today. This is something we've done before. Now, MG here has been doing some research, and apparently... This was one of the most highly viewed episodes in the last six months. This is line over wash using colored pencil or watercolor pencil. Put the wash down first, put line on top of that. I've done a video for this, put it down in the description. This is the first one I did on that and there's also a video for this. It'll also be in the description. It's just a very satisfying technique and it's been on my mind a lot lately because I've wanted to try some other things. So drawing with watercolor adding drawing to watercolor is just packed with possibilities or avenues for you to explore. Oh, don't give me a teacher's pet. What have you done to help out with this episode? You booted up the computer for MG. Well, thank you very much. Let's go paint. All right, let me just set the stage for you a little bit before we get into painting. Uh, these are those two uh, pieces I just showed you and both of these are videos and both of these were spontaneous paintings so it just gives you another depth another avenue to explore technique and the big qualifier for this is you put down wash first and add line on top normally when you refer to line and wash uh, typically you're drawing and then adding watercolor to it very often is done with black ink doesn't have to be when you add washes first and then come back on top of it with line you're able to follow sort of the avenues and values and edges that watercolor has created. Now, for spontaneity, that's just rife with possibilities. Because as in most spontaneous painting, it'll just do its own thing sometimes, and it'll surprise you. I mean, this right here was just an absolute joy to do. Uh, it's per joy personified. Again, it's just one of those collaborations with watercolor that has new possibilities. So we're going to be following that up today with yet another approach, maybe a slightly simpler approach, maybe something a little bit easier to dive into. These two were fairly involved. And what sort of spurred this on is I wanted to clean out this pen and fill it with a different ink. I had a black ink in there. It was nearly empty. I had a Noodler's Walnut ink I had not used. It's a very dark brown ink. And so I thought, oh, I'll just fill that in and do some sketching with it. And it just got me thinking, oh, let's do some brown ink on top of a watercolor or on top of a spontaneous wash, a wash and line. So these things can get started just with the little seed of an idea. If you're always just looking for tutorials, uh, that's not always going to do it. You're going to get stuck in little ruts. I hate getting stuck in ruts. Um, I've tried for years to get unstuck out of some ruts I created many years ago. That was the whole impetus behind spontaneous painting. And the line that can be put on top of here can not only be black ink or watercolor pencil, it could be just regular color pencil. This was not spontaneous, but you may have seen this episode. This is uh, a watercolor I did, and a lot of the details and texture were put in on top of this with regular uh, oil-based colored pencil, Poly Faber Castell Polychromos. So while not spontaneous, the things you learn and explore in techniques like this may help you in other mixed media ways. There are a number of colored inks out there. And one of the great things about this is when you put down line first and then watercolor over it, it's gotta be waterproof. When you do it in reverse, it doesn't have to be. You can use water soluble ink. You can use dip pen inks with uh, like the Winsor Newton inks or the Liquitex inks, which are permanent. India ink, if you like doing it with brown ink like we're gonna look at today, but you want something a little more permanent, there are sepia pens out there, uh, like the Micron. Pigma Micron makes sepia pens that are completely waterproof. So just a lot of possibilities. I can't stress that enough. And it's what's so exciting about combining line with wash. In this case, line on top of wash. Okay, so I've been speaking enough. Let's get to the painting. All right, so I've taped off. This is a page in my uh, perfect sketchbook. I've taped it off into two sections. And they're fairly small from the ones that I've done before. But they go real quick, and that's sort of the point of this video. These are really quick, easy ways to do line over wash. 
And the focus here, and here I'm just protecting some parts of the sketchbook. I, it may not be necessary, but I wasn't sure whether I was going to do spatter or not. And I didn't want any runs to invade other areas. What I thought I would set for myself here as a challenge or a parameter is just simple shapes. Usually these spontaneous uh, paintings that you see me do are like real washy, splashy. Uh, there are so many ways you can do spontaneous painting. I mean, you just don't need to set any hard and fast rules, but just think up things. Think up ways in which you want to test watercolor. I'm using a little bit of Daniel Smith Imperial Purple, some Quinacridone Sienna, uh, the gray was a uh, Alvaro Caliente gray. All the colors are grayed a little bit, so they're not all full strength. There's a little bit of Perylene Violet, and I just wanted some simple abstract shapes, whatever could come to my mind. Didn't know if those would be tree lines, they probably will be uh, along a ground plane, maybe some rocks and a hill. So, a uh, very, very unconscious painting here. Um, and I just react. Each next brush stroke is a reaction to the previous one. So, I don't see something in my mind's eye. This is just a mini mister. And I'm wanting to get those colors to run in a few places. Just to add a little sort of interest. So, yeah, I mean... What you see here is almost done in terms of the underwash. I'm just adding some little pops. Some little darker areas that might uh, translate into some detail. Maybe a little extra center of interest detail there. And oh rats, oh rats, oh rats. I forgot to push the record button on the ink stage. The pen and ink stage. I can't believe it. <sighs> I'm going to go outside and scream. Do you hear? That is the sound of ultimate suffering. Yes. Yes, it is. Unbelievable. Okay, you know what? In my defense, anybody who's ever made videos, this has happened to more than once. All right, so I'm sorry about that, folks. I, uh, not to worry, I have another one. I'm doing two of these. Uh, the other one will be a little different, but uh, you can see here uh, what I've done, hopefully. And that ink work went really, really quickly. So this is a fast process. And here I'm just uh, putting in some final touches. You can add a little watercolor on top just uh, as touch-up you know, for some of the shapes that you've drawn in, or some of the areas, just to define, darken, um, tweak, however you like. So I'm very happy with that, and I just hate that I didn't get it on camera. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Okay, well, let's, let's move on to the next one. And for the last one, by the way, I used an oval wash. This one I'm using uh, a flat. And I'm going to go for some more geometric shapes. But same parameter and maybe even more simplified. I'm just using very basic shapes. Very unconscious painting. I'm just kind of going for an abstract composition. The only thing I might be thinking about is... Where is there a ground plane? Is there something that would translate into a ground plane? But I'm not even forcing that. And as brush strokes go down, um, they make me react and I put other ones down. Again, just a hit with the mini mister just to get some of it to run. This is uh, Perylene Violet, Perylene Green. And there's a little bit of Imperial Purple. So very limited. and. All those colors are very gray. Now here is one of the few sort of actual things I thought maybe that might make a distant hill. So I'm actually thinking of something. But it's a reaction to what's already there. And what I started to see was maybe a stand of trees. Surprise, surprise. Uh, so uh, maybe some fir trees this time. And um, just a lot of vertical movement and rhythm in that tree stand. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind with this process is you want to probably keep it lighter. I do add a little bit of contrast and pops here and there, but uh, you want the ink work to show well on top. At least I do. So I try to keep those washes very light. You can see what I ended up with and how quick that was. It's dry. I'm putting the ink down on a totally dry painting. And now I'm just going to pen in uh, some tree trunk detail. Make a little stand of trees here. As I mentioned in the intro, this is Noodler's Walnut Ink. I don't know that it's actual walnut ink. Maybe it is, but it's, it's walnut in color. Now, they say this is one of their bulletproof inks, which means it's, it will dry waterproof. However, the thing you need to know about noodlers is that on cotton paper, their stuff is rarely perfectly waterproof. It's made to be bulletproof on cellulose paper, and even then it depends on the paper. So, um, it doesn't really matter though. I mean, I could be using completely water-soluble ink here and it wouldn't matter. That's kind of one of the great things about line over wash. But all I'm doing is picking out edges and transitions and sort of enhancing those, um, making myself a little stand of a sort of bare fir trees here. And I just I really can't tell you how fun and rewarding this process was. It's, it just excites me when I'm discovering new ways to approach things. You can see what I'm doing with those shapes in the background. I figure that those background trees are just bare trees. And we're just seeing uh, those tones as uh, fine detail branches. It doesn't matter, at least it doesn't matter to me, if these things turn out kind of stylized. In fact, I was kind of shooting for that with these. The, the, this one more than the other one. I literally whacked both of these out, including the ink work, in less than a couple hours. And that's with, you know, turning the camera on and off. Or at least off. <laughs> Not always on in this case. And as I reach a greater state of finish, you know, it's just deciding almost where to stop. Uh, I'm just adding little dits and dots and dashes. Some of those those horizontal limbs coming out just to kind of communicate tree a little more clearly. Just a few finer branches that kind of sets the scale. It's very easy to get detailed drunk. So I just try to add enough detail where my eye really wants to see it and don't put it where it doesn't. Fun, 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 fun. Now patrons, I'm going to have a demo of several even smaller, very small versions of this where you just like use one or two shapes. Just look for that and kind of breaking this process down into a, a practice exercise if you will. I'll probably do that on the facing page. And here just like with the last one I'm just popping in a little bit of watercolor over the top of that ink. Yes the ink will loosen up and spread a little bit um, but I'm just careful not to spread it too much. That's why I'm not doing big old washes over these things. But wow, I'm really surprised how these came out and how satisfying they were to do. Thanks everybody for watching. Hope this excited you, gave you some ideas, 
Thank you so much, patrons, for your support. It's so critical. That's what makes this channel go. And we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.